Hello friends, welcome to Data Pandit. Uh, today we are going to continue with the continuous flow in App Initio. And uh, earlier we have discussed uh, regarding the differences between batch graph and uh, continuous flow graph. And also the uh, early, uh, you know, early concept regarding the continuous flow graphs. So we can implement continuous flow uh, using different com components, obviously. It depends upon the what type of queues we are, what, what are the, our inputs actually. So there are uh, many components available in App Initio, uh, depending upon the you know, external queue or, uh, you know, there are many external queues are available. So uh, like, you know, for Java related JMS queues, IBM WebSphere, you know, uh, messaging queue, MQ, and from uh, cloud services like, uh, you know, AWS, uh, AWS S3 subscribes. So we can subscribe from the S3 bucket self and Kinesis streams, right? So these are uh, different specific external party components for subscribing and publishing both. You know, if we, so I have taken a sub subscribe component, which is uh, primarily, uh, you know, built for ab initio queues native queues okay but mostly uh, the configuration would be similar for other external subscriber also uh, okay so and today's video we are going to touch upon only the subscribe component which is uh, only for uh, reading the abinitio queues or a file or a, you know sequence of files so, you know, uh, if you do not uh, provide the, you know, queues, then this subscribe component can read from a file as well, right? Or a sequence of files using some pattern, you specify some pattern in, in file parameter. So it can uh, read the patterns of the files, right? Okay, uh, one by one. And uh, what, uh, sub so in this video, we are going to touch upon only subscribe component and and I think in subsequent, uh, you know, sessions, we can touch upon one of the external subscriber. So how it is different from uh, internal and external. So there will be a minute difference between those. And uh, similarly, we can, uh, we, we are not going to touch upon you know, all the components basically. So, but we can uh, touch, we can compare one external and internal, let's say. Okay. So this subscribe and publish component are for native web initial queues. And uh, so, if if you have JMS JMS subscribe, don't Java messaging subscribe. MQ subscribe is for MQ. MQ publishes for MQ. Q service. Okay. So likewise, there are components available. Okay. So okay, then then yeah. So what subscribe component does is it reads your data from either from Avenue Q if you provide the Avenue Q a file or a sequence of files. So, and what other things it does is it generate the compute point or checkpoint, it, which is responsible for initiating the checkpoint self, you know, compute points basically from the graph because it's the initial point of the graph. So, like we have input files, right, in our batch graph. So, because we do not have input files, so subscribe does the, uh, the input uh, as works as an input file in the continuous graph. So it uh, it is uh, responsible for generation and the controlling of the compute points when to uh, when to accept the new records you know when when to end the and the you know checkpoints and the related initiate every task for a complete whole set of uh, components which are you know whole set of you know components which are part of that uh, continuous flow graphs. Okay, so let's uh, jump into the parameters, how we configure, uh, you know, our uh, continuous uh, flow graph component. So, which is subscribe component. So, we have in-file parameter over here. So, in-file parameter, uh, there could be uh, three ways we can configure it. We can provide the ab initio queue. So, how we provide the ab initio queue? We generate the ab initio queue using m mq commands, okay. Uh, so, we have a m command, right, for file system and m command for... Uh, air command right oh, sorry m command for uh, multi directory and uh, serial directories right so similarly we have mq command uh, for uh, you know two commands specifically to uh, to administer the um, queues internal ab initio queues okay we don't have to uh, do any other uh, commands on queue based uh, you know directory so this is 
queue is itself is a directory so when we create the um, using the command so then there will be a directory would be created and then then we we uh, you know associate that uh, subscriber id for a particular uh, you know ab issue queue or ab issue directory so then there will be some directory would be generated for each and every subscriber so we specify the path for that sub directory okay for and subscriber id or okay in the in file or um, it could be a file or it could be a sequence of file sequence of file meaning we can give the star and you know initial part let's say some directory and then you know abc dot star so these these files would be read one by one so this is first parameter and uh, so this is related to another parameter right id is an optional parameter but uh, the in file parameter is uh, related to uh, related to id parameter id parameter is an optional parameter id is the subscriber id so whenever you generate the queue ab issue queue using ab issue queue command so there will be a subscriber id generated so you need to specify the subscriber id and uh, the association of subscriber id could be done as in uh, when required or could be you know done uh, whenever you create the queue com okay so this id is for that subscriber id okay so we can generate many more subscriber ids uh, when we create the ab issue queue okay? so one queue can be read by you know different subscribers right at the same time so that is also possible then there is a more parameter so whenever uh, you know so whenever the records uh, number of records goes out while reading so the more parameter will uh, guide to the subscriber component what to do you know so there are options here so so this this is applicable only when you know uh, this is optional parameter more parameter this is uh, applicable only when we are reading from the file so if you specify more parameter and the values would be appended so the appended will uh, will say that the subscriber has, if if the number of records has uh, finished for a particular file then the wait parameter is there so there is an associated per parameter wait if wait is true then it will wait for you know many other incoming record right so we are specifying appended in more param more parameter and also wait is true so it will wait for um, other records to come into that file and then it will start reading the file again reading the those records again and uh, there is a uh, other value is files after okay so then uh, so there will be a pattern uh, so we can specify the patterns you know pattern of the files so after uh, number of records goes uh, you know has been finished reading then it will be reading those those uh, you know set of files right so we can specify that so then, then there is a remove file parameter okay so what happens is after reading the files we have to remove those files so if we if we specify the room remove parameter then uh, you know uh, the whatever file has been read would be removed automatically okay so that uh, so the management of the operations would be easier so if we do not specify anything then what what happens is uh, the component will be if we specify none okay for more parameter none then component would exit after reading everything okay if we specify files in directory then there will be a directory and uh, you know depending upon the pattern matching okay so it will read those those files okay so then there is a one more, more parameter called uh, checkpoint trigger okay so this is very important uh, parameter basically so the checkpoint parameter so before that let me tell you i mean uh, this um, the subscriber component looks like a cylinder uh, lying in horizontal okay it's not nothing new actually so similar way we have a description tab layout tab you know a condition tab and the port tab everything is same but the parameters would differ and the picture would be different okay so there is nothing um, much here okay 
So checkpoint trigger. So basically, checkpoint trigger is the parameter we need to configure as part of uh, this uh, subscribe component, and it will. It is responsible for uh, you know how the check generation of the checkpoint happens and the generation of the compute point happens. So okay. So there are three. Uh, there are uh, ways how we do. So the first is the time interval. Okay. So. Depending upon the clock, we can specify let's say 10 seconds or 300 seconds or by default it's a 300 second. So if you don't do not specify anything, so then uh, you know the 300 after 300 sec second checkpoint trigger checkpoint would be generated. Okay, but but also we can uh, limit this uh, functionality as well. Okay, depending upon the there is a par parameter available inbuilt parameter available in Aminisho. Okay. So time interval is the after some after some let's say 100 seconds or 100 you know 100 seconds I need to generate the time uh, generate the checkpoint so that's what this is the functionality and then there is a record count so after let's say after uh, reading 50 records I need to generate the checkpoint then I can specify if you know uh, record count in this parameter okay checkpoint tr trigger is a uh, record count and then in in the record, there is a parameter called record as well. So there I can specify, let's say 20. And uh, here I can specify, um, you know, um, record count. Record count. So the value of the checkpoint trigger parameter would be record count. And then there is another parameter called record. There will be a value 20. So I, after each and every 20 records, there will be a checkpoint. So what, it, uh, what happens is subscriber component Subscribe component would read the 20 records and then it, it will initiate the checkpoint. Okay, so that whenever all the 20 records would be processed by publish component and the publish would, uh, you know, uh, produce the output for all the 20 records, then publisher would indicate to the subscriber that I have finished my job, you may start reading, you know, next 20 records, right? Then subscribe would read the next 20 records. And similarly, the same things happens. Okay. Okay. And uh, there is a DML driven things actually. So what happens is uh, we 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 know that there are checkpoints, so there are compute points, right? So there is a DML driven. So there is a package in uh, package parameter. Okay. DML driven is the way one of the value of the checkpoint trigger. Okay. So DML driven is says that it allow there is a package parameter like we have package in uh, different other re format or other components which are transform based components. Similarly, we have a package uh, package parameter over here. In that, uh, whenever we specify checkpoint trigger as a DML driven, so it allows us to. There are different functions available basically. So depending upon now. Uh, you know, inbuilt functions, inbuilt parameters, inbuilt record types are there. So you know, we can manipulate those uh, those values, and we can uh, generate the compute point basically and checkpoint depending upon the logic. We need to write some logic over here uh, in package, and uh, there are you know check before, check after. You know, so these kind of uh, functions are available over there. We can specify that uh, after how many records you know after reading how many records we can generate the compute points or or checkpoints so basically compute points are a kind of subset of uh, checkpoints but checkpoints have a recovery uh, capability but compute point doesn't have so so this was to uh, facilitate the pipeline parallelism basically so because compute uh, com uh, checkpoint, what it does is uh, it will uh, it will break the pipeline parallelism basically. How it breaks the pipeline parallelism is at a time only one uh, one set of records would be processed, right? One uh, you know uh, what we call it as a number of records, right? Um, group uh, group of records would be processed at a time let's say I, I i spoke about 20 records right so at a time 20 records would be processed uh, from the subscriber to the publish component right but um, uh, and after that next 20 record will be read so 
this way this breaks the pipeline actually to to facilitate the pipeline parallelism uh, you know uh, a bit there introduce the uh, compute points so what happens is uh, compute point is let's within 20 records it, it will say that uh, yeah make it uh, you know a piece of uh, five five records so after five records there will be one checkpoint and then you know five records would be processed then again next five quickly and then five and five right 20 records so so but compute point doesn't have the recovery capability okay so if any failure happens then it will falls on the uh, corresponding uh, um, checkpoint only it it cannot uh, be recovered by the compute points okay because we do not save the files uh, the, comp the corresponding component doesn't save the files while uh, ending the compute point basically so this is that and uh, then there is a parameter called q driven right it's a record count i uh, talked about q driven so so this is the parameter so so whenever we create the queues from the published component published component is also creates the queues right so let's say our uh, one of the, our previous graph or a previous uh, you know uh, previous process has generated the queue have been issued queues and we are reading that queue so so the compute point and check mode would be uh, would be as according to the that queue okay because the queue will store every information of a compute point and check points so if we are using that queue which is published by a prior process then we can specify a check point trigger as queue driven and we give that queue and you know subscriber id and uh, everything else and uh, every checkpoint process would be happening as part of as pro as according to the that queue okay and then there is a service component so okay so this is for a compute point basically so after each and every record there will be a compute point so this is not non recoverable recoverable graphs so whenever we specify checkpoint trigger trigger as service there won't be any checkpoint basically only the compute points would be there and there, those also after one record so after processing one record there will be compute points so basically it's a all compute points only there, there is no checkpoint so this is a, not a desirable because it doesn't have a recovery mechanism uh, for that if we specify this parameter then there won't be a recovery over here so then there is a record record count so i i was specifying right this is not record actually this is a record count actually so then there is a record count parameter and uh, then there is a package parameter i was talking about though then in the package uh, parameter i was talking about right what we do in package point there are uh, com uh, package parameters uh, i was saying right i should uh, remove from here so these are the values of uh, checkpoint trigger and then i have package parameter okay so i should uh, put count DML driven and service okay so these are the values of uh, checkpoint trigger basically so we have talked about this this is very important uh, parameter checkpoint trigger we need to configure a very uh, uh, you know processly then there is a package parameter so package parameter i was talking about it will allow us to uh, define the uh, different uh, inbuilt functions like check before check after check event you know so these are the inbuilt functions basically that and those are uh, those works on uh, inbuilt record types and inbuilt return types okay so so that they that more basically we we control the compute point and check points over here and also other uh, different functions okay so there are many functions available basically and then there is a compressed parameter okay so what happens is we can uh, compress the data <coughs> whenever we are writing the have an issue queue so it can uh, <coughs> it can the, uh, the subscribe component is capable of uh, reading the compressed data as well so if you specify compressed as true then it will expect the data <coughs> in compressed format and it will be uh, reading the compressed and decompression would happen on a web when you know traveling the record from one component to another it automatically decompresses basically okay. 
so this is that and uh, okay and uh, yeah so then there is a you know uh, so there is a there are something called version of the queue so there are three types of version of the queue version 1 version 2 and version 3 so version 1 is uh, it was very basic so it did not uh, support uh, many functionality it did not have the uh, header records it did not have the uh, you know any uh, metadata information for a particular queue therefore uh, they have started using version number 2 and version number 3 basically so this is also there actually so and then there is a file called uh, there is a parameter called remove files right i will talk about so whenever we are whenever the subscriber component is uh, basically reading the files then after reading the files it has to remove the files or not uh, so basically this is the that okay and uh, then there is a parameter called uh, uh, where string okay so where string is the parameter where uh, you know it specifies that whether you know the components you know adding the length prefix for you know after reading the record right so after reading the record so to 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 maintain the you know recoverability and to maintain the uh, other aspect right the processing aspect it adds some information to the particular read record which is read which has been read so how we are going to do is whether it specify the any string or not there is a none okay there is a parameter called where string so where string will specify uh, either it could, could be none or the values or it could be a you no know, record you can say and or it could be you know file so if you specify none in where string then the component does not add any length prefix okay if we specify a record then it will uh, you know it will uh, you know add the youtube string integer for or this kind of uh, you know record format it is going to add <laughs> and if you specify where string is file then you know the component or the subscriber component will read you know, each file as a single record okay each file as a single record basically and then it will be you know uh, process on on that particular file okay uh, so so few uh, few parameters were uh, were deprecated in because uh, we are using uh, this one <coughs> new uh, set of new version of the queues okay so and then there is a parameter called weight so if the if the subscribe component is uh, uh, working with files then if one of the files is finished then if you specify weight is false then the component is going to be exit if you specify where it is true, then it will wait for the many more records to come or for the other files, or depending upon the configuration of the subscribe component anyway. Okay, then there are uh, different logging and rejection, uh, reject threshold kind of parameter. So these are uh, basically uh, same. So in the subscribe component uh, too, you know, we don't have input uh, port, we have output port. That's basically the same as the input file in, uh, you know, a batch graph. And there are log port, error port, and reject port. So similar, uh, similar logging and reject threshold and, you know, error out, log out, log output. So these, those parameters are still available in subscribe component. So basically in uh, continuous graphs, nothing more over here. It works on uh, queues like we work on files. And it could be a, I was talking about while creating the queues, right? And we creating the directory. So it could be a serial directory or a multi-directory, right? While creating the queues. So, uh, but we prefer the serial, serial uh, you know, processing because uh, the recovery mechanism is a little complex in uh, continuous graphs. Okay, so to work on, uh, you know, multi-files or multi-directory uh, things are, kind of tedious so if if we, if we do not see the absolute uh, or you know um, perfect um, you know uh, performance benefit right for using the multi directory even then uh, then we we can uh, you know kind of use it otherwise we kind of uh, don't uh, prefer the multi uh, multi directory uh, mechanism over here 
so this is uh, all about subscribe component uh, guys uh, so maybe uh, it's beneficial for you uh, maybe you can subscribe my channel we are going to discuss many more things this was the day two of uh, continuous flow we are uh, i'm uh, aiming to uh, uh, complete this in uh, seven uh, seven days actually so next time we are going to touch up on the runtime behavior of subscribe component and then then there will be a publish component. So as I was talking about earlier, the, if you understood the subscribe component, publish component, and uh, and the mechanism of checkpoints and compute point generation, so and the control of those, then the continuous flow is nothing. Uh, okay, in that sense, so we would be needing uh, with the with the less effort and more more things actually. Okay. And we would be understanding the runtime behavior of both the component, both the endpoints basically, and uh, uh, checkpointing and compute points how these works. And then we will be touching a few examples on last day of the of the, this uh, com com continuous flow series. And uh, as and when, uh, in between, if anything miscellaneous we need to discuss, we are going to discuss on that. Okay. With that, thank you so much.